Hey guys, this is Max Hand 15 bringing you our first episode in our new series, which is Let's Play, obviously Skyrim. Now this is a fantastic game. I know it's kind of unusual because normally on my channel I do sort of like online games and MMOs, but I just thought this game is so so good. Obviously, as you'll probably already know, when it came out, we got like 10, uh, 10 out of 10 across the boards. So, you know, um, it's so brilliant and it has so much content that I just want to sort of bring it to you guys. Uh, and that's basically uh, the reason. I mean, what other reason do you need to uh, play a game like this? It's fantastic. Anyway, as you can see, we are on the character sort of creation uh, part of the introduction. Basically, we have been sort of captured for unknown reasons and taken to this town of Ivanstead, I believe. Ivanstead. Uh, and where we are about to be executed, which is not the best way to start uh, our adventure. But anyway, as you can see here, we have a choice of different races. Now, there are a lot of races in this game. Uh, as you can see, the first one are the Nords, who are basic humans. By the way, once again, if you sort of want to read the description of the race, please do just pause the YouTube video, because I'll just quickly go through them. Then, of course, we have the Orcs, who are ugly sons of bitches. I mean, wow, look at those. They're Ugh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Enough said about those guys. Um, and here we have the Red God, who come from a sort of desert realm or uh, area, I believe. Then Wood Elves, obviously, um, they are a species of elves who I assume possibly live in woods and stuff. As I'd, um, I should probably mention that I do not know like a huge amount about the Elder Scrolls lore. I've only ever played Skyrim. I've played Skyrim a lot, so I know quite a bit about Skyrim. But I, I don't know um, anything about sort of the whole lore behind it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know about the different races and where they come from. And then here we have the Khajiit, who are the cat people. Uh, Imperials, who are another sort of race of humans. High Elves, who are sort of the prestigious elves who sort of view themselves above everyone else and uh, have sort of a very strong magical uh, links. Uh, so, yeah, they're pretty cool as well. Uh, now here we have the um, Dark Elves who look really dodgy, I mean look at those eyes, you would not want to find one of those in the dark, seriously, um, but yeah they sort of look like assassins to me, uh, I'm not sure what their sort of lore is, but they have a really cool racial ability, because by the way each race obviously has a racial ability, and their one's called Ancestors Wrath, and it surrounds them in um, sort of a veil of fire, which is a really cool ability. Uh, and then here we have the Bretons, who are sort of like the magical humans in a way. Uh, they have like really strong links to magic, just like the High Elves, and they're resistant to magic as well, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then last but not least, we have the Argonians, who are sort of a very unusual race. Uh, and obviously they are sort of these lizard people who can breathe underwater, which is a really cool feature. Now in terms of what we're sort of going to roll uh, in this sort of Let's Play, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there is a huge choice. Uh, I want to go for, but I think we might just go for the Khajiit, because they're very, very unusual, never played one before, and they look really, really cool, to be honest. Okay, now, next step is obviously your body, you've got your sex, your presets, uh, your skin tone and weight, we're going to make sure we're not, like, overweight, just sort of, like, um, yeah, normal, there we go, that's fine. Uh, head, obviously, you have a ton of different options, you've got all these war paint, scars, dirt, complexion, I think we're fine as we are, to be honest, our face is okay. It's not too important anyway, because we'll probably be playing this in first person. Uh, and then of course you've got your nose types, nose height, nose length, jaws, cheekbones, laugh lines, chins, necks, foreheads. It's a crazy amount of customization. To be honest, it's probably like the most detailed customization I've ever seen in the game. Um, yeah, to date really, I think. And then here we have eye shape uh, and eye color. Now we're just going to quickly change our eye color because I want to show you. Because obviously it changes sort of the eye type, I guess. There's one really frequent. I mean, look at that one. God, it looks so feral and just creepy. Once again, you would not want to find that in a dark room. That's just scary. Um, in terms of what we're going to go for, uh, I think we'll just go for sort of... Should we look really... No, I think we'll just look normal. There we go. That's that's a good look. Uh, and then, of course, once again, you've got all these like, different things like eye height, eye width, uh, eye liner. I don't know why you want that, but uh, eye depth and all that stuff. There's just way too much here. Uh, and then, we've got, of course, we've got like brow heights and all that. Mouths as well. And last but not least, hair. Uh, I, d I don't think we're going to go for any hair because hair looks pretty weird on a cat. I mean, it's a cat after all. Uh, but there are a lot of options for you to play with. And then facial hair, obviously, you can like have all these crazy amounts of different uh, types of facial hair. We're just going to go with none because we are a cat. And I d I've never seen a cat with a beard before, to be honest. Um, and then, of course, you have hair colour. I don't really want to mess up hair colour too much because I, I was happy with the colour it was. But um, let's just quickly scroll sort of through them so you guys sort of get an idea of like it's not. It's, it's not very subtle to be honest. 
Oh, wait, oh, is that the... Uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> I think that's the facial hair stuff. I thought it was like your fur colour. But oh well, never mind. Uh, okay, and we're all done there. So we'll just quickly click R to finish and we can finally name our character. Now, I think we're gonna name him... Hmm, actually, it's quite interesting because I was thinking of calling him Tyson. But, you know, uh, that's slightly unoriginal and we have it in all our other series. But, uh, and obviously being a cat person, you want a sort of unique name. Um... <laughs> to be honest, I'm just gonna go with Tyson. I know it sounds really boring, uh, but they don't ever mention it anymore. Who are you? And, you would want to know. Um, caravans catching. There's no point really coming up with a weird new trouble. name when it's not even used Captain, later on in the story. So we might as well just leave it as list. Tyson, like we normally Forget do. Forget the list. He goes to the block. Oh wow, what a bitch! By orders, Captain. Well, that's nice. I'm sorry. We'll make sure your remains are returned to elsewhere. Whew. Follow the captain, prisoner. Really? Just because we're not on a list, you want to send us off oh, to the block? That's just that's that's low. That's disgusting. <laughs> no, she she's horrible. I think she dies in the end. Actually, yeah, that's a good All thing. Does she die? Oh, so I'm, I'm probably giving away like too much of the uh, sort of storyline of what happens next. But like just try and guess. His king and and um, his oh, try and do this. If you know what's going to happen next, you probably you do. So put it in the comments below, and then Skyrim obviously you will have the feeling I'm cheap. And don't cheat. Don't like skip ahead. Just do it right now. Uh, put it in the, the comments, and obviously if you get it right, then we'll have the satisfaction of that. And there you go. That was your hint. That sound. That's pretty cool. It's nothing. Carry on. Right, so yes, carry on. General That's nice. Tullius. Give them their last rites. As we commend your souls to Aetherius, blessings of the eight divines upon you. For the love of Talos, shut up and let's get these over. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love that guy. He's so funny. Even though, like, obviously you can guess what's going to happen to him next. I got all morning. Still, I think he's a legend for saying that. I think everyone here is going to be executed along with us. My wow, so there's actually not that many people. You say the same. Okay, well here's the gruesome bit, so uh, all your queenish people turn away. Squeamish people rather. Oh, I'm sorry, too late. <laughs> uh. Okay, now this is like one thing that sort of confuses me. Like you see his bodies on the ground there, like later on when we sort of had to step forward. You'll see what happens, but we literally just suddenly become like his body just like sort of just doesn't affect our us it like has no space or it doesn't take up any space it has no matter which is kind of crazy to be honest in my opinion I said next prisoner once again the bitch is talking well I must have called her a bitch quite a lot but she kind of is like sending us to the block for no good reason we get caught for unknown reasons and then she sends us to the block it's not very nice Okay, now you find out what happens. And there you go, guys. If you haven't got what's going to happen next, <laughs> I'm not sure what, do you see? what could be more obvious, to be honest. And there we go. It is a dragon. Now, this guy, uh, I think it's called Alduin, and he is sort of the main uh, boss or villain, except I wouldn't really call him a boss or villain, because that's sort of uh, understatement, considering he is a bloody dragon. I mean, look at him. He's summoning meteors from the bloody sky. And now, uh... Oh, this is sort of the start of the uh, game that you can basically control. We can now walk around using the WASD buttons. Uh, obviously, our vision's pr pretty blurred right now. I guess it would be if you suddenly like hit by some dragon shouts or whatever. Anyway, we apparently now have to make our way sort of up these steps. I think. Oh my God, he got free! It's all for Stormcloak. Now, by the way, the whole sort of lore of uh, Skyrim, in case you didn't know, is where the Imperials have sort of, not invaded, but sort of taken over Skyrim, and the, Scorm the Stormcloaks who originally lived here believe, you know, it's their heresy, uh, um, and, you know, they should be allowed to live here. Holy shit. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, no, I did. <laughs> I lie. I played this too much. Uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but anyway, like, the Stormcloaks think that the Imperials are sort of invading, and then the Imperials think that Skyrim has always been part of their empire, and so it's rightfully theirs, whereas the Stormcloaks think it's rightfully theirs. And then there's this whole civil war you which is happening. Now. As you can see here, that's Got what taught us how to jump great. there. Toral. Holy God, everyone get back. What's going on? Holy 
He does look awesome, doesn't he? Graphics in this game are awesome. Still alive, prisoner. For two for a dragon who's supposedly like, you know, all powerful. He did a pretty bad job of like trying to attack us. I mean he literally just attacked a burning stump. Which he'd already burnt. Oh, he really does this stuff quickly, doesn't he? I mean like in about ten seconds that we've been free, the entire town is on village. Uh the entire town is on village. The entire town is on fire, whoa. Uh, the entire town is on fire. I mean, like, the stone walls have been destroyed. Houses are in ruins and, like, everyone's dead. It's pretty impressive. Oh, don't worry, we're just getting hurt by fire. It's not like the dragons caught us or anything. Man, they are trying a really bad effort at trying to kill this guy. Man, they're actually hitting him, though, which is kind of a surprise. But anyway, we have to continue to follow this guy. Uh, and, yeah, basically, welcome to Skyrim. This is what it's sort of about. Uh, running through sort of forts which are basically destroyed in five seconds by dragons, defeating dragons and defeating uh, sort of, uh, badly aiming archers. <laughs> oh, and here we go, these two, you still have the choice who to go with, the Imperial or the Stormcloak. Now just because I like the Imperials the best, we're going to go with them and um, the area that you go with with this guy, he, there are like chests and boxes which you can get um, which have like, sort of starting equipment in them which is useful, but you can go with either one, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, the room that you start in here, as you'll see in a minute, um, is basically you can get to that exact same place uh, through the Stormcloak, so it makes no difference really who you go with. It just sort of, uh, actually yeah, I don't think it actually makes any difference at all uh, to the game, it's just sort of, it's introducing you to the whole idea of choice, because you get quite a lot of choices in Skyrim, which is pretty cool to see. Um, you know, like now and again you'll have uh, Choices like where it says enter the keep with Hadvar or Raloff. Raloff. Bring us of the end times. Can you like free me now? We keep moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Thank goodness. Oh, we went there with Hadvar. Go. I thought we were Take going with Raloff. Well, there should be plenty of gear to choose from. Yep. And now this is the bit that I was talking about. There are sort of chests around which you can uh, get some uh, new equipment from. And as you can see here, we have some imperial gear plus uh, an iron sword, so we'll just, we'll just take it all for now. I mean, we'll probably end up dropping uh, a lot of it later on, because we don't need it, but you know, too. might as well take it for now. Or another moving. iron sword, we I could take it for like dual there. wielding. Another iron sword, okay, we don't need three iron swords. Uh, just quickly going, looking around, ah, extra ch uh, chests, that's the word, uh, <laughs> extra chests uh, for us to loot, and an empty one for some weird reason. Uh, and now sort of on to equipping it. Uh, yeah, equipping it. If you click I, it obviously brings up your um, sort of inventory, and we have all this gear that we can put on, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's drop this um, rough spun stuff because we don't need that. And if we just sort of scroll out to go into third person, here we are. Now this is a, our character. He looks pretty damn dopey in that uh, stupid hat. <laughs> which is ignore that for now, okay? Um, Come on, and this way. Sort of. Actually, one sec. Um, just I wanted to sort of talk about. Uh, how I'm going to play this guy, because obviously in this game there are sort of classes um, it, it, that is, no, there aren't, there aren't classes, that's the wrong thing to say uh, there aren't classes, but there are sort of different pieces of equipment uh, like uh, dual handing, um, double handing uh, like one handed, spells, blocking and there's all sorts, and archery as well there's all sorts of different ones which kind of, some people like relate to classes but they're not really uh, and like most people sort of choose a type, so either you're an archer or you're a one-handed or a dual-handed or a double-handed uh, or a magic and we are um, a like user in the whole game and we are going to go as a magic person for now obviously we don't have any like mage gear well, uh, okay but they did not stand a chance, they were pretty... oh wow god I thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to be able to take them there. As you saw there, you have a sort of mana bar, which obviously decreases the uh, more you um, attack, uh, the more you uh, use a spell, or uh, just depending on the type of spell it is, because some spells obviously uh, cost more in terms of mana than other ones do. We've got a nice iron axe there. Uh, we also got some gauntlets, which is sort of quite important as well. I think for the rest, we'll just go, uh, the rest of the gameplay, we'll go in. Third, uh, first person, just because it's simpler to see then uh, and stuff like that, and see where we're going. And especially with magic, it's easier to aim your spells. Shit! Whoa! Okay, 
That always gets me by surprise. I never expected that one. I I must have played the starting Damn, bit like four or five times, and yet this bit just what always gets me. And somehow the ceiling's still down. intact. If you look up there, the ceiling's still these intact, and yet all this rubble has sort of passed through, which is kind of crazy and slightly unrealistic. Oh, well. oh God, no! Damn it! Yeah, this is one thing you have to sort of watch out for. Try not to hit your uh, partner because uh, he will eventually turn on you. I think, if I'm right. See if you can find some pub. See if these guys have any use for good? No. Okay, now, um, this is sort of just showing you, uh, sort of looting and also collecting health potions and stamina potions and magic potions, which will be very important later on. Uh, this is a salt pile, which is an ingredient, and in the game there are a ton of ingredients to collect, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, there's a lot of variety, and each one has sort of a different ability and can go towards different potions, uh, and we're just going to grab them all because they're all very useful. Okay, and now we sort of descend into the dungeons, which is pretty cool to be honest. Uh, we're obviously trying to escape this dragon which is suddenly attacked him, oh my god. Um, I'm not sure who we're meant to attack, oh wait, no, wrong person. We're meant to attack people. Uh, let's just attack all of them, because you can, and then like, oh, had, uh, had bar won't attack us if we kill these guys. And anyway, they have gear for us. I want his, I want his, like, hood. I don't think, no, you can't get his hood, that's kind of annoying. And slightly unrealistic. By the way, here's sort of a tip. Uh, from me to you guys. If you are playing Skyrim, I sort of suggest you have sort of one of every weapon. So one mace, uh, one sort of battle axe, one hammer, uh, one shield, one sword, one dagger. Because, you know, they're all useful in their own ways uh, and some people like to just sort of, you know, switch up now and again. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is sort of uh, tutorial lock picking. Uh, so if you quickly go into this knapsack, you'll get four lock picks and a healing potion, uh, which will then obviously allow you to pick this lock, which is a novice level. Now lock picking works by you, uh, as it says here, use the mouse to rotate the lock pick and then press W to rotate the lock itself. So basically you have to find the right position for the lock pick to be in uh, for uh, the sort of, and then you sort of turn it like this and then if you're in the right place it will unlock. Uh, as you can see here we're not because it just jams there. So if we go forward, oh no it jams there. So it's sort of like uh, trial and error basically and there we go, we got it. Uh, trial and error until you get to the right spot. Uh, which will then sort of help you. Uh, and as you can see here, we now have uh, found a dead mage. Sorry about that, we don't mean to leave you basically naked, uh, but we need this gear more than you do now, because uh, as I said, we're gonna be a mage. So we're just gonna quickly equip this gear. Uh, these braces are better than the ones we have on. Uh, yeah, I think we're all set to be honest. Wow, we have really furry hands. But <laughs> yeah, it's kinda cool. Um, yeah, so in terms of, wait, what are you doing? Carry on going. Advar. Is he just going to stare at me? Staring competition. Does he ever blink? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead. Because he's taking too long. <laughs> uh, I don't know what he's doing there, maybe. Will he follow us? No, he's just standing. Do we need to talk to him, maybe? Yeah, let's talk to him and see what happens. I'm glad to... I can't decide if things are about to get worse or better. Okay, I have no idea what he's doing. I think I might have uh, glitched out slightly. But oh well. Um, oh. Oh, I thought he moved. <laughs> he hasn't. Uh, we could just carry on without him. It doesn't really matter. I know where I'm going. As I've said, I've done this about five times. Uh, where is he? Following us now? Come on, Hadvar. Good little Hadvar. No, you didn't like that? Okay, if, yeah, okay. He's just going to leave us behind. Uh, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Once we leave this place, he will automatically be transported to us, I believe. The only downside is now we have to face all the uh, enemies ourselves, which is not the best. But this is one sort of cool feature about the game, it has all this like fog, this fog is so cool. Whenever you see this fog, you know something's Where going down, you know there's like enemies like, shh, there's the stealth this, but oh, you can me stealth me by the way everything. by clicking control. Oh god, don't get, don't get seen. Oh, we can do this, we can do this. Surprise attack. <laughs> there we go, surprise attack. Oh and wow, Hadvar is actually here. I didn't expect him to actually come help us this time. Oh, but one thing about this, I wouldn't say this is a tutorial area, but it's definitely sort of the starting area. It will sort of uh, guide you through the different uh, equipment types that are out there. I mean, uh, as you saw, like, it, um, these sort of characters in this game have been slowly dropping sort of battle axes, shields, swords, daggers, uh, and then also magic as well, as you saw back there. So it sort of allows you to choose your original archetype. By the way, this is wine which you can burn, and it just like, literally murders everything in its path. But now, uh, as you can see, it is giving us some bow and arrows. And obviously, I picked up a bow there. 
uh, and obviously their arrows are extremely useful to us. Do they have any better weapons? We have iron swords ready. Is a hide shield better than the one we have? Because we picked up an iron shield. So that's 22 defense and there's 16. No, it's not. Okay. So now we can carry on. Wait, did I take his arrows? Oh, because normally the arrows disappear off their back if you loot the arrows. But oh well. We are obviously now carrying on uh, further into... Um, Let's see what this goes. So into the caves and obviously our escape from this dragon. I'm pretty sure the dragon can't get down here. I mean, we are thoroughly lost in the caves down here. Uh, okay, now just before we sort of carry on down here, which will lead us on to the next bit, here's a little tip. If you turn left and come down into this little sort of uh, passageway... Holy crap. Shit. No, I know I said dragons can't get down here, but I'm not sure what that was. But anyway, if you come down here into this little sort of uh, passage, you get a nice minor healing potion, which are extremely useful later on in the game. Oh, and also some gold. But uh, talking of sort of the healing potions, they're extremely useful in the game, especially if you are not going to sort of play as a mage. I know I'm making it sound like there are classes in the game, they're seriously not. That's a really nice thing about Skyrim, you can switch out your weapons anytime and just sort of um, change your skill set. But you don't have skill sets, sorry, uh, that's the wrong word, change your sort of abilities uh, and basically the way you attack, the way you attack, yeah, that's probably a better way of putting it um, but health potions are extremely useful if you're not going to be a mage because obviously they're your primary source of healing oh my god, these guys are so creepy, they are sort of the like, most disgusting thing in the game, it has to be said I mean, j okay, just look at that face, look at it oh my god, that's disgusting frostbite spider, the only good thing about them is that they drop frostbite venom which is basically a poison which can be applied to weapons in this game yes you can apply poison to weapons but it is only sort of a one time thing uh, so you have to be sort of careful about when you use it and stuff like that anyway continuing on down into into the recesses of this uh, sort of like uh, fort yeah that's one thing that's always confused me like there are these forts in these games whereby they sort of lead into caves I mean what sort of fort leads into a cave it's pretty, um, not very well built. The whole point is it's defended and it, this just looks all like Hold half sort of built. Bear just ahead. See her? I'd rather not tangle with her oh, right yeah, now. The bear. You might be able to sneak by. Just take it nice and slow and watch where you step. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can take this boat. Might take it by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow you. Okay, well, watch we back. could try and sneak it. Yeah, let's try, let's try and sneak this thing. Sneak around this pillar. Oh, we are sneaky sons of bitches, aren't we? Oh god, it detects us. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, you did you bet. Um, okay. Well, we snuck past it, but unfortunately our sneaky level didn't go up, which is quite unusual, I swear it normally does. So let's quickly equip one of our uh, longbows and just sort of silently take it out. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Now, don't get in the way, had far. Sure. Nice oh, killing now. cinematic there. Now obviously we don't have to sneak anymore because the bear's dead. Oh, that was a pretty sick shot if I do say so myself. But as you can see, he has dropped some bear claws, which are once again ingredients, uh, which we can use later on to sort of discover their um, properties. And a bear pelt. Now pelts in this game, which you can collect from wild animals, allow you to craft leather, uh, leather, which then obviously in turn allows you to craft different things later on in the game. Uh, and that is one really cool feature, uh, and I highly sort of suggest you go out and sort of you know, hunt, like and that's now. sort of one advantage of hunting in this game, just hunting random animals out in the wild, uh, and then you'll get sort of uh, stuff which will allow you to get leather. And as you can see, we are now at the end of this, and we are heading into Skyrim, which is awesome. Um, and as you'll see, we have now sort of completed, I wouldn't say it's like the tutorial level, it's basically sort of just the starting area which sort of walks you through the different like uh, ways to sort of fight in this game, either through magic, uh, melee weapons or ranged weapons, uh, which is pretty cool. But we finished that now, and we were sort of now officially into sort of the open world of Skyrim, and from here it's basically sort of just do whatever you want which is basically what Skyrim is all about, and that's such a cool feature of this game. As you can see, while while uh, sort of the game loads, it gives you sort of these uh, different um, models which you can sort of play with and zoom in and out of, which are pretty cool, and also tips as well. Wait. Now, what are we doing out here? Oh, yeah, I forgot you have to hide, supposedly from the dragon, which if you saw just sort of flew overhead, and the house flown away. Looks like he's gone for good this time, but I don't think we should stick around to see if he comes back. No, I agree. Don't worry. Closest town from here is Riverwood. 
My uncle's the blacksmith. I'm sure he'd help you out. Closest town from here is Riverwood. My you uncle's the just blacksmith said that. there. I'm sure he'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Yeah, I Good luck. You probably I wouldn't have way. made it without your help today. I probably could have made it without yours, to be honest. Considering you sort of just stood there at one point in the corridor, then just mysteriously appeared by my side, which is kind of strange, but kind of cool. Um, in its own way. Now, here we are, out in the wide open world of Skyrim, which is awesome. And if I just quickly sort of show you the world map, it is huge. Obviously, it doesn't look like there's much here right now, but that's purely just sort of because uh, we basically haven't explored anywhere. Uh, and these sort of, like... Um, symbols here, the white and black symbols all around are the major cities such as Riften, uh, Falkreath and Whiterun, uh, which is really cool and sort of shows you exactly where they are um, so at least you have some sort of uh, <laughs> notification of where things are uh, in the game. But as you can see our target down here is Talk to Alvor in Riverwood and this is the town of Riverwood here which we need to make our way to uh, but unfortunately we have run out of time for this episode so we will make our way there next episode. As you can see we are pretty cool looking at the moment. We're, we're like a mage slash archer which is kind of odd combination uh, but don't worry we are going to be sort of mainly focusing on being a mage but then obviously I will sort of show you guys the other aspects of the game uh, such as crafting and also different types of combat. Uh, so you have all that to sort of look forward to uh, in future episodes plus also tips from myself because I am extremely knowledgeable in this game obviously. No I'm joking I've just played it way too much. Um, but yeah, uh, so you'll get future tips from me, and also uh, if you guys want to like sort of tell me any tips as well, then obviously I will relay that back to everyone else as well. So thank you very much, uh, guys, for watching. I guess all there is left to say now is I hope you have a great week wherever you are in the world. I hope to see you next time in our future episodes and, of course, other series. I will see you then, and bye-bye.